Hey everybody, welcome to Night Without Armor. Today we're going to be talking about Vikings and weaving. Now the name Viking comes from the word vik, meaning creek or bay or some sort of body of water. Uh, you see it in Reykjavik, which means the bay of smoke. You see it in the English word sandwich. The witch is actually etymologically related to vik in Viking. The Vikings were creek, creek dwellers and they are perhaps best known for their ships and that's pretty justifiable because their ships allowed them to do what they did. The ships were incredibly well built, ingeniously built. They had a very shallow draft, less than three feet, which allowed Vikings to sail far up the rivers of Europe and penetrate the continent very quickly and efficiently and disappear before anyone could give chase. And the ships were propelled either or both by oar and sail. And the sails are what we're going to be focusing on today because the sails of Viking ships were actually worth more than the ships themselves. And if you start thinking about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. The sails would have been woven entirely by wool, from wool, and entirely by hand. You think about that, the size of those sails, the amount of wool, the amount of woven material, that is an incredible effort to produce a single sail. The sheep had to be raised, shorn, the wool washed, carded, spun, then woven, then the woven panels would have to be stitched into sails. And often they were sort of you know, decoratively made as well. So if you think about the, the amount of work going into that process, it's, it's really incredible. And almost all of that work would have been done by the women of medieval Scandinavia. So back in the fall, I set out with one of my advisors at Cornell to build a reconstructed loom a warp-weighted loom. So Professor Wayne Harbert in the Department of Linguistics at Cornell University and I teamed up and we built a warp-weighted loom. The warp-weighted loom is the type of loom that would have been current throughout medieval Europe and throughout the ancient world, ancient European Mediterranean. It would have been used in ancient Egypt and it's the type of loom that Penelope would have been weaving on in the Odyssey, weaving and unweaving. So, I will show you our attempt. It's pretty crude. Um, the loom itself is made from, is made of basically a rectangular frame. The warp is hung from a top beam and is weighted at the bottom by weights. Loom weights are a common archaeological find in medieval Scandinavian settlements. They are basically these donut-shaped stones, stonets really, and you often find them in rows as they would have been at the bottom of the loom, and they would have been calibrated to weigh approximately the same so that there would be even tension on the warp across the loom. So you have the warp hanging from the top beam, weighted at the bottom by stones, there is a heddle tied on in the middle to tied on to the back warp and it allows you to switch the strings with the front warp. And then uh, as the weaving progressed at the top of the loom, as it moved down, the woven portion of cloth could be rolled around the top beam and more warp could be unrolled from the stones at the bottom. So you could produce very long strips of cloth but the width of the cloth was limited to the width of the loom. Now sometimes these looms were, were very wide. Ours is not that big, but uh, it's still it's a good size loom. But um, yeah, so it was a fun project, very interesting project. Uh, learned a lot from doing it, and I uh, hope you enjoy it.